Francesca, you deliver the news to Elizabeth that she's being let go. I think every charter, I'm continually putting energy and checking up on you. And we've had numerous chats about this, but sleeping in the guest cabin was sort of like, you know, the final straw for me. Um. And super disrespectful to the interior of the boat and, and, and this. So it's come to a sort of a decision that we're going to have to let you go. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, we're in the bridge and, you know, now's the time and it was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, it was sad as well. She's been on for the whole season and she helped us through it and she didn't get us through it, but she helped us through it. And, you know, I hopefully she learned a lot. I think the, the boat will work better. I've been wanting this to happen like the whole season. And like it finally got to that point. A part of me was sad, but then a part of me was like, okay, we can, yeah, move move past this now. It's like next chapter. I'm I'm sorry. It's just I'm sorry. Please. I'm really sorry. Let me just please stick it out these next I think, two. I think you've exhausted like all of your all of your chances. I'm really sorry. Francesca. Chess will help you get your stuff together. She had the same look on her face that Shane had. Shocked. Moi? Her head's just not in the game. It's trying to get her Aurora or whatever you call that thing healed. Aura. <laughs> Aura. Aurora. It was time. We had it we had exhausted every possibility, given her every opportunity to step up to the plate. I'm sorry. So am I. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. Okay. It was shocking at the time. Uh, I was I was really upset. I hold a lot of pride in myself and, and in, in my intentions, I guess, and, and in my actions. I, I thought I was, I mean, I was running around. I thought I was working hard and doing a good job, but it never felt good enough for her. And, you know, I know my flaws with, with having, I guess, having had a thing with James and how that could have screwed stuff up. But I was so willing to get, move on if she just communicated with me. I just wish that there was more communication between us, better communication, because I would have fixed anything she had a problem with. She got it pretty good the whole season. Like she got it, she got it good. You know, I was picking up the pieces for her the whole season. So she actually didn't have to do her job really to the best of her ability, nor did she want to. You know, so she had it really good. And the yachts that I've been on as well, like people get let go all the time, all the time. You can be on a boat for 24 hours and get kicked off. Like if someone doesn't like you or they disagree with the smallest thing, they'll be like, no, you're off. And sometimes people don't even get a reason. Her reason was saying that it was because of the guest cabin thing, that that was the last straw. And I just thought that was so weird and unfair because like Captain Lee had already talked to us about that before the charter like if i was going to get fired because of that then it would have happened then i don't know what happened over the charter that would have provoked me getting fired other than that she just can't stand my face anymore and wants me out of there you know you gave fuel to the fire i'm kind of surprised that that was the whole thing that was driven toward that that was the that was the issue but you shouldn't have given fuel to the fire. When she started out, she seemed good, but I think she gets too focused on romantic ideals. Her job came secondary, and that's not what I need. And I might have been a little late in pulling the trigger on that because I, I think it affected the team overall. You let Francesca deliver the news to Elizabeth in the bridge that she will be let go. I thought because I had fought chess on that particular matter that it might help her out mentally a little bit if she were the one to say okay not like i told you so to me but sort of a vindication that she was correcting her assessment and my assessment was misplaced well no but it was wrong so wrong's wrong wrong is wrong you gotta you gotta own it and i do I was being very true to myself in, in the moments, and uh, I, I really did feel that way, that connection. I really wanted to see it through. I really was feeling stressed out 
and and poorly handled by um, I don't know, a million other ways of saying it <laughs> by my boss every day that I live with, you know, in this situation. And it was just, it was very overwhelming, very stressful. Um, yeah, I guess like James was my little outlet of escape. I think I could have been way more just strategic um, about this whole situation. I just think we learn from all of these experiences and where we need to heal and, yeah, and go forth and, and, and do better. So what did you think of Elizabeth's reaction to being let go? Messy. Please, please. Oh, so awkward. It was quite honestly the most dramatic exit of any job I've <laughs> ever seen. Jessica, can you talk to Captain Lee? I made the call. <laughs> it's like she didn't know that she had already been given like eight chances. Yeah, way past, way past the norm. Yeah. I mean, look what happened to Shane. You know, Shane got fired after like three chances. You know you've gotten eight chances. How do you not know that? And you're surprised now that you're getting fired? Like, I can't believe you're doing this. Your behavior towards me has been absolute bull****. So that is I feel is the all... same way back towards you, though. You haven't been nice towards me. And you're really disrespecting me, and you're chatting about me to everybody, and it's coming back to me. She was begging. Begging. Begging, and that's like it makes you cringe. Getting fired is humiliating to begin with. Don't make it worse. Yeah, hold on to some dignity. That's that's not a good look. I was like, I love you so much, but I just wish you would have some like dignity and not give Francesca the satisfaction of like you know you begging for your job at this point. Like it's done. You're going. Just like take it on the chin and have your meltdown later, like don't give her the satisfaction of that reaction, but it was insane. And it happened, and then I was like, all right, now I got a full charge fight for my position, because that's how strongly I felt about how I deserve to be there, and deserve, sometimes I hate that word. I mean, like, I would be a good addition to this team still. I would, I would be a, a great addition. I would add value to these charters. Like, I, you know, like, that's what I want to do. And that's why I, I didn't leave without a fight. She was like, me and following me around like she grabbed my ankle and was like on the floor <laughs> no she didn't do that but that's what it felt like <laughs> can we just no can we I've just roll this out chances. as a tease i've given you the chances elizabeth i please. really have please don't touch me i don't understand why she was pleading like she wasn't having a good time like was she exactly. like we weren't having a good time with her on board like why would you stay on a boat when yeah. you don't have that relationship with the interior crew like why and then she was talking to rachel in the cabin and then they were having some sort of like, oh my God, it's like the end of the world. And I felt sorry for Rachel as well, you know, a little bit because she had formed a closer uh, bond with Elizabeth. She just said that I don't respect her and she wants me to go. Just stay calm. Let's just pack. <laughs> calm now. Fuming right now. I know you're upset. The fact that I was up there helping Elizabeth pack, it's nice to have a friend there with you. So appreciative of I think it was absolutely disgusting and despicable. So that's just me. The way she reacted was like a little bit over dramatic, over the top, I think. Super, yeah, like to the point it was acting. Like, okay, like you don't act like that, not like naturally. Like, as if she didn't think that was coming, you know what I mean? Like, well, hello, exactly. And that's true. If I was in that position, I'd be like, oh, sh like, when is Francesca gonna, like, you know, get rid of me? It's not unwarranted and yeah, she over over exaggerated that um, whole reaction quite a lot. She the point it was almost uh, embarrassing, I think. Mm, I wanna give you a hug. I'm so upset. Mm. It was almost like she was begging for her life. Yeah, it was a mad one. I can well she came to me obviously kind of to comfort her saying that look, I was literally priming her saying if you lose your job why are you bothered? You know, you've done everything you've come like you've come here to do. You know, it's not the end of the world. You say you don't like working for her anyway. This, this, and this. Yeah. And then finding out the way she reacted, obviously, is a bit. I was like, oh my god, she didn't listen to a word I said. Yeah, Elizabeth's getting fired. Oh, shit. That's not fair. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because you're such an asshole. <laughs> 
We were inside, upstairs, near Slower Staircase. So I followed her up, I followed her up there to like, just to try to calm her down. And she's at the bottom of these stairs and she's going, Francesca, don't do this. I love you. I'm just like this, just cringing in myself. And I just had, I just had to go. I was just like, right, the damage has been done. Enough's enough. And I just had to walk off. Yeah, I remember no, when we were down in the crew mess and she was at a cabin and she was like, Francesca, please, 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 <laughs> Francesca, please let me, please, I need this. You have no idea how much. And I was just like, because she's such a sweet person. And like, I was just like, have some dignity. Like, it was just so undignified. Like, you just couldn't help but just like cringe. It was, it was bad. It was really bad. It was dramatic, that's for sure. So Rachel, while you were at a dinner with the crew, all of a sudden, a birthday cake that was supposed to be for Elizabeth is brought out to the table. Ooh, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Happy birthday to you! And well, let's, have some cake. let's have some cake! <laughs> It was cool as f Happy birthday to me. I was f***ing pissed that the f***ing crew celebrated her leaving. I was super f***ing mad. So they brought a cake out and celebrated me leaving instead of celebrating... Well, obviously they wouldn't celebrate my birthday, but... They brought the was... cake out and you weren't there and we couldn't celebrate your birthday, so I got really mad and I almost tossed the table. Rachel got like super, super like butthurt about it, but she's the one who ordered it. Rachel and I, I think had a conversation like, oh, should we order a cake or like, can you guys cake? Something like that. Tonight we're going to get restaurants like bring out a cake or something with a candle and sing happy birthday for Elizabeth. Yeah. Do you want me to have that arranged? Yeah. Okay. Then when it came out, obviously, because Rachel had taken Elizabeth under her wing, I think she was probably feeling like a bit to blame and like quite upset that this cake hadn't been cancelled because um, she, she thought she cancelled it or something happened like that. And then it still came and then it was, you know, everyone kind of sang happy birthday because we're all kind of like awkward and didn't really know how to deal with the situation. So obviously you just try and laugh at it. She went off like a frog in a sock. <laughs> happy birthday, Elizabeth. Oh, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Here, let me actually get you a piece. Oh, you started before I got the knife? Oh, we don't need the knife. Oh, you don't? No, no. <laughs> no, it's already in somebody's back. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Sorry. You don't do a cake? Nope. What, what do you expect me to do? Just like let the cake go to waste in remembrance of Elizabeth? Like, no, that's ridiculous. No, I'm going to eat the cake. It's a cake. I'm going to enjoy it. I mean, she's the one who ordered the cake and then she forgot to cancel it. So shouldn't you just be angry at yourself? I don't think that was anyone's intention to knife Elizabeth in the back with her birthday cake. Like no. that wasn't the intention at all. I pretty much think the whole crew would have thought that. It was just dessert on the table, and then everyone was just really hungry. Kate came out, and we were just like, oh, f we ate it anyway. Yeah, it was pe people got heated over that cake. Like, not what you expect when a birthday cake comes out. People yeah. were stressed. Rachel, more than anyone. I thought it was vindictive. I thought it was and malice and no integrity there. Thanks for sticking up for me, my love. Thank you. This chocolate cake, how could you have chocolate, like a massive chocolate cake in front of you with forks right there, ready to go? I was like, hmm. <laughs> of course I'm going to eat it. And I could just feel like there was fumes coming out of Rachel's ears. <laughs> yeah, she She's was not pissed. happy. But also another, I think she went that too far with the drinks again. I think when she drinks too much, she doesn't take responsibility for her own actions. And she just blames everyone. There's a cold place in <laughs> hell. Yeah. Rachel, do you want to come with us? No, I'm good. Are you all good? No, I'm good. But she was so fine, and then. Uh, have you met Rachel? She was just so pissed, and she wouldn't even have a bar of me. Wouldn't allow me any time of day. And I'm like, I'm trying to be there consoling her. After she's done absolutely no consoling to me, by the way, this entire season, and here I am trying to, like, make her feel better. I just want everyone to be happy. And, yeah. like, you know, I'm trying to make her, you know, feel better because she did just lose a friend as well, and I couldn't do anything about the cake. I didn't even know the cake was coming. I mean, it's not my problem, really, but here I am trying to, like, make, make things right. Oh, get the f*** away from me. Get the f*** away from me.
Like, I'm sorry. This whole time has been nothing but fake as And like, I just want a cheese stew, not some fake ass bitch. So Izzy, we see you talk to Rob before he leaves about your feelings on how he acted toward you this season. You know, the crazy girl in me just like had this moment and I was like, there's only one way off this boat. So I was like pacing around the off deck, like f***ing lying, waiting for its prey. I think that the way you treated me and the passive comments that you said to me is really disrespectful. And especially going into a new management position, it's just, it's not appropriate just like massive asshole thing to do. I hear you. And he came out was like, well, I'm so sorry. This is the fakest apology I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I should have walked it the way I did. I was like, don't fucking apologize afterwards. Like, it's not like you didn't know what you were doing. Like you knew exactly what you were doing. Pull it more that way. A little courtesy goes a long way. Get out, boy. It's a magic word. <laughs> <laughs> we could quickly wash Port Companion way. Rob. I'm ready. I can hear you. In a situation like that, Izzy was like really heated and really passionate and was obviously very affected by my actions and my comments. So it wasn't a conversation. It was it was her venting. And all I could do in that situation was let her vent. You know, any kind of further engagement would have just caused a bigger confrontation. And I don't think that would have served anybody well. She was obviously very affected um, by my actions and my comments. Um, to a degree which I didn't think she would be. And uh, yeah, I felt pretty terrible knowing that um, I made her feel that way. I just don't think he particularly liked me and I'm not sure why. I mean, I can be an annoying person sometimes, I understand. <laughs> like, I know that like my personality is not for everyone. Um, and probably when I got promoted to lead, deck lead deck canned, I probably like had more pressure on my shoulders and was a bit less like fun. But yeah, no, I'm not particularly sure. I just don't think he liked me. But that's okay. Not everyone has to like you. They just don't have to be a dick to you all the time. A 32-year-old should not be acting like a 12-year-old. That's just not what I wanted to happen at all. And I'm sorry if it's made you feel this way. You literally don't give a I know you don't give a You're not being sincere in your apology at all. She's a boss-ass bitch. That's how apologies work. Sometimes people see the error in something they've done, and if they've made somebody feel a certain way that they really didn't want to. But if you'd seen the error in yeah. what you'd done, I mean, I spoke to you about this beforehand. I think it is something you actually need to think about and not give me a false apology for. I'm not sure maybe it might have been a little bit different if she didn't let it build up, and then every time Rob like, confront, like said something to her, I think most of the time Rob actually said anything to her, like me and Eddie weren't there, so we couldn't really obviously like go in and just say, why are you being like that? Maybe if she would have just called him out there and then it might not have built up and led to that and it might have changed the relationship going forward. But I don't know, like, if you do let it build up like that, it, that is what eventually is going to happen. I think experienced folks working in a small environment where tensions can get high, um, like responsible adults, do need to bring things up as they happen because then you can deal with them, you can work past the issues and you can grow as a team and work towards becoming better friends and a better team. Bottling things up um, doesn't really work on a boat. I think maybe being like a woman, you're always taught to like, you know, sit down and shut up and to like not confront someone. But I guess if, you know, if you're a guy, it's like perfectly okay for you to go and front, confront someone. So I've never really thought about it that way. I think after that, I didn't really have the opportunity to go and be like, the next time you did like, hey, like what the f is your problem? Um, so yeah, I kind of just had to have it out there and then. James, did you feel caught in the middle at all between Rob and Izzy? Well, if I'm being honest, I didn't even know they had a problem until pretty much right at the end where they ended up going off at each other. Rob was hiding the entire time. And so I figured that, like, he'd heard what I was going to, like, I wanted to have that with him. Um, and I was like, okay, like, I'm never going to be able to find a time to do this. I also need you to lure Eddie away from Rob for a second because I want to have a chat with Rob about something. After you have a, your conversation when Rob is leaving the boat, Izzy, you come back and you kind of confront James and you seem like you think he told Rob that, you know, gave him a little tip off that this conversation was going to happen. I know you tipped him off. Don't know what you're on about. Yeah, exactly. 
We make one doesn't mean so much after all, James. Bag. I didn't know for sure, but like as a woman and as a person, I feel like I have very good intuition. Because I'd said to James, I was like, hey, like, do you know where Rob is? I want to have a chat with him. And then all of a sudden I can't find Rob. And Rob <laughs> went to the bathroom where I come out. And I was like, okay, I think I know what's going on here. Um, so yeah, I kind of felt just like a bit disappointed because I, you know, me and James were friends. But then I guess like it's kind of a tricky situation because he was friends with both people. So maybe if it was like, you know, me and James and then someone else who I was also equally as good friends with and, you know, the other person wanted to go and confront them, maybe I would have done the same thing. So I was disappointed, but I, I also kind of sort of understand in a way. She's right. At the same time, like I say, if Rob came up to me and just went, I want to speak to Izzy, I need to do this, I'd, I'd have done the same thing. I just tipped Izzy up and just... I think all I said to Rob was, um, Izzy seems stressed out. I think she I think she wants to have a word with you or something like, you know, careful how you treat her. And like I said, I would have just done the same thing for Izzy as well. Last thing I want on the boat is... I say last thing I want on the boat was drama. I always wanted drama on the boat, but not between two people, which I was literally the closest with. I mean, clearly it seems like things are good between you two today. So you you yeah. maintained a friendship after. Yeah, um, yeah. That yeah, we're all good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we like we obviously we've chatted and like kept in contact and things like that. But yeah, no, I think James is someone that I like probably want to have in like my life for the rest of my life because we generally just get along so well. And he's like one of the few people I can say that I'm like genuinely thankful that I've met. I mean, to see that he's not returning the compliments about me is obviously. The no, I, I, I was just thinking at the same time, like, even like now when I'm at home, it's a Saturday night, I've got a lot of friends that I can hang out with, but at the same time, a lot of the time I just want to be by myself. I'm, I am quite bad like that. Uh, like I say, if it was someone like Izzy, I would actually want to spend time and actually do something with. Yeah. Bessie's forever. <laughs>
it hit me at first with all these emotions of going like we're done the chart is over like oh my god we're done like now we can celebrate like let's have a drink and then same again i'm like thinking should we be celebrating we're already all so tired that i was kind of happy i was kind of like oh yes i can go back to my bed um but also i was very unhappy to be missing out on the money because i love money and that was two charts worth of tips but yeah but then I still don't think any of us really realized how serious coronavirus was until we got home. I'm sure James is happy he didn't have to work anymore. Yeah, I was kind of relieved when we got the when we got the news that there's no more charges. I pretty much had enough, you know. I was kind of done. I was elated. Oh. Ah, oh, that means I don't have to do this crap anymore. And then I get to go home. And it did feel like crap. In my little personal world with the personal stuff, but you know, it did. It did. Just got real, didn't it? Just got real. Yeah. All of a sudden, that virus came knocking on our door here in the Caribbean. Sure did. Honestly, the first thing that crossed my mind was that somebody found drugs. Crew-wide, crew-wide drug testing is about to happen. That's that's the way I think, like, you know, I guess, like, I don't know, working on a tugboat or something like that, because that's probably what, how would it happen if drugs showed up on a boat? Is that well, everybody person, drug what's, what's the first thing, Eddie, what's the first thing that happens if you have an incident at sea? Get drug tested. Immediately. Immediately. Alcohol and drug testing. Yep. Nothing else happens before that does. It's a surprise. You don't know what's coming. And that's what that's what this felt like to me. I was like, oh, this is random drug testing. Like this is this is what happens. But then uh, you know, if you sat down and be like, have Captain Lee tell us season's over. It was shocking. It was shocking. And I really the first thing that came across my mind was I'll have a beer now. Yeah. Uh, Maybe two. <laughs> Maybe three. Maybe three. If I'm feeling feisty. Rachel actually has a meeting with you, Captain Lee, about service and how it's, you know, still kind of not working with Francesca. Are you okay? I'm not okay. <laughs> I've got a lot of issues when it comes to service, and it's not Ash or Elizabeth. We have two charters to go. I know. And two. And That's you're... six f***ing days. I know. I can stand on my head straight up for six days if I have to. And I see a lot of frustration on Chess's part because of the slide she had to pick up for Elizabeth. Yeah. All I need is six more days. It's like, this is something you guys got to get together on. I can't solve it. I can't make it happen. You know, it, it, that's one of those things that has to happen organically between you and front of the house. Back of the house is the galley. Front of the house is the service. And they have to be on the same page. It was just a really uncomfortable work environment, which I really didn't appreciate because it was super unprofessional. And I didn't really like it. Um, and I lose my temper over it. So, and and we all see that. And I just get fed up because it's just... That show meter is just right now boiling over the edge, and I just can't take it anymore. We got a lot of issues when it comes to service. Oh, really? It's not just Elizabeth. Now I'm going into the eighth charter, and I've had a struggle every single time I turn around. It's so frustrating. How many times did Francesca go to Captain Lee every day? You know, about all of us, about everybody. I mean, not just me, not just. Elizabeth, I mean, everybody. And I'm like, I felt kind of bad at one point for Captain Lee. I just kind of looked at him and I'm like, do you want me to make your breakfast? <laughs> like... I can have an effect if it's if it's something minor and superficial, just do it. But this is definitely a communication problem between them. They're not on the same page. And they used to be. And I'm trying to get them to go back to where they used to be. and. I want to be cautious in how I deal with it. Because if I'm not careful, I could really step in it. I mean, I got Eddie, I got Chez, and I got Rachel. And uh, they all have to be here with me till the goddamn end. So it's difficult. So what was it like to say goodbye to Elizabeth when she left the boat? <laughs> yeah, just one of those things where, you know, all right, we'll keep in touch, you know, one of them. And then I don't even remember what else I said. I feel like um, you were glad to be rid of her because you would have had to otherwise break up with her yourself. 
Oh, God. Um, yeah, the whole time we were on this boat, I, I think I was almost like trying to avoid a conversation about what's going on. And then obviously she kept pressing, she kept pressing. And then obviously when she went to go leave the boat, it was just like just trying to comfort her more about her leaving the boat than obviously what's going on between me and her. So I obviously tried to point it more towards that direction. And then I kind of like just push it towards that. And then literally just like, oh, keep in touch, you know. And I, I probably made something up about how we're going to do something at some point. And then I just probably picked up a shaman and carried on cleaning the boat. Such a gentleman. At that point, were you like hopeful that you could continue something with James after the season ended? Um, to be honest, I was not feeling very hopeful about the future between us. Just after like the conversation we had the previous night. Do you think you're able to tell me what we are? Probably not. I'm thinking I don't usually have these conversations till about three, four months in. I can't do this big shit anymore. It just didn't work out in the way that it maybe could have in a parallel universe. That's how I think, you know? We kept in touch like for maybe like a week, two weeks, but within those week or two weeks, we were messaging each other constantly. Well, that's always just going to fade out. Well, the only people I really kept in touch with is like Robin Izzy. I told myself I wasn't going to fall for anything and I did. But like I said, I didn't I didn't fall for it too hard where like I'm upset and my heart's broken and I'm like, you know, that's, so there you go. I mean, that's something good, eh? I don't, I, I don't hand things out easily. Yeah. You've got to get, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get somewhere in my book, you've got to do it the old fashioned way. You have to earn it. And Eddie earned it.